Are you intrigued by unsolved mysteries and conspiracy theories? The new documentary, MH370, The Plane That Disappeared, is coming to Netflix, and not only is it filled with fascinating info, but it's got some wild conjecture as well. Malaysian Airlines Flight 370 was supposed to be a routine trip, a red-eye from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing, with 239 passengers and crew on board. But shortly after takeoff on a calm 2014 night, MH370 vanished from the radar screens for good. The shocking disappearance of a commercial airliner made headlines, sparked riots, plunged the passengers' next of kin into a nightmare, and generated a global search for answers that never came. Now, this truly is a crazy mystery, still to this day. I mean, nothing solid has ever been found that could actually point to what happened to MH370 and its passengers. The documentary is told in three parts, with the first episode spending the majority of the time establishing what went on, giving us the timelines and locations, even hearing radio exchanges between the cockpit and air traffic controllers. So well before we get any sort of guessing or are taken down rabbit holes, what is known to transpire is solidified for us. The information is both intriguing and heartbreaking, especially as we get interviews from family members of those that were on the plane. They're still in a state of limbo, pretty sure that their loved ones are dead, but without any sort of wreckage or bodies to confirm, a lot of them are just in a perpetual state of wonder and ambiguity. Now, for as interesting as the actual information is and how well it's presented for us, the real meat of the documentary comes when a few individuals are interviewed and they then share their theories of what could possibly have happened. And for a few of these, the people are fairly credible. They're not wackos that were just hanging out on the internet looking for attention. I mean, in fact, two of the people that present their theories are journalists, one from the aviation industry and the other from a French daily newspaper. So they do have credibility when it comes to researching facts and having a certain level of skepticism. The three theories that are proposed, which are basically the titles of each episode, are the pilot, hijacking, and an in-flight interception. And while each of these ideas does create a lot of intrigue, the first is just really more of slandering based on supposition than anything. I mean, the premise becomes that the pilot had some radical political motivation, or he just wanted to kill himself so he could cox his plan to divert the plane and down it in a remote area of the ocean. The glaring issue that this theory has, as well as the hijacking theory, is that no communications were sent from any of the passengers' phones. While passengers and crew, they may not have immediately known that something was amiss, at a certain point they do realize, and then common sense says that at least some of them would try and send out a phone call or a text to loved ones. I mean, also, GPS data from their phones is never revealed, making the scenario really appear that it just disappeared in an instant. Now, with most of these theories, there is information that's uncovered that I think it's horrifying at a plane's vulnerabilities. So even if the idea of what happened is utter crap, some things that are shown that should probably be secured since now this is just being shown to the world. Now, for instance, there's a panel at the front of first class in these Boeing 777 planes that allow very easy and unlocked access to a ton of the plane's communication and tracking computers. And it's just a panel on the floor that allows basically anybody to get into the electronic guts of the plane. Now, for me, that's terrifying, especially now that it's being shown how to access it in a documentary. I mean, it's kind of like when catalytic converters were being stolen off of cars all across the United States, and local news stations were running stories that basically gave a step-by-step -step instruction on how to complete the theft. I mean, it's kind of irresponsible, so hopefully the access on the planes, it's now much more secure. For as wild as some of the ideas are that are presented, I found them to be really engaging and interesting. There is a massive mystery still surrounding everything that happened, and it makes for some very entertaining watching. The episodes are each 90 minutes long, so this is a much larger time commitment than a lot of the documentaries that we watch. But the time, it just flew by thanks to the large number of interviews that are captured, as well as the way that just the narrative is pieced together to tell a cohesive and captivating story. Now, I do think you're going to roll your eyes a bunch at some of the ideas that are presented. I mean, I paused several times during this to discuss weaknesses in an argument or point out some of the leaps of logic that just didn't make any sense. But then there are other times that I was actually believing the plausibility of certain suggestions because they felt more rational and less like a random guess. I think the last theory that's presented in the documentary does seem like it holds the most merit and possibility for holding some truth. The motives may or may not be accurate, but the technology and the rationale used to explain what could have happened certainly does answer a ton of questions, but not all of them. I mean, there are still elements that go unaddressed as it relates to radar pings, so the theory isn't foolproof or 100% solid, but it does provide the most plausibility out of everything that's explored within the documentary. 
And while a lot of the interview footage is shot really well, there are repetitive images and animations that are used throughout that can become a bit tiring and rote. Now, I understand there's not much that can be done differently to show the same scenario over and over, especially like on a radar screen, but it was quite noticeable as elements were overused. I think also that while a lot of the interviewees come across as credible and trustworthy, there is one that feels like he came more out of left field than anything. I mean, there are suggestions as to what his motivations could be for becoming involved, as well as things in his past that could make him questionable. But the documentary never took the opportunity to really delve into him once claims are made about him. And it seems a bit lazy to not just fully explore the dude. And then also, on a funny note, to me, he really resembled Beauregard from The Muppets. It was this look that he gives that just instantly made me think and picture that fuzzy janitor. And of course, yeah, I know. That has nothing to do with anything. But for me, it made me chuckle, so I figured I'd share that. Okay, so I think this documentary can be both intriguing and frustrating to watch because it showcases some plausible ideas as well as facts that are then backed up by some knowledgeable interviews. But because this mystery still remains unsolved, everything we see and hear is just supposition. And this is a heartbreaking watch, especially as family members of passengers give their accounts and let us in on what they were feeling and experiencing at the time of the disappearance, as well as how it has affected them in the almost decades since it's passed. While it is a longer watch and does have repetition to a lot of the imagery, the information is presented in an entertaining manner, allowing the time to just fly by, no pun intended. There's no sex or nudity, some profanity, and just a little bit of violence. Now, as a reminder, I don't give couch ratings to documentaries, but you're, if you're into conspiracy theories or unsolved mysteries, I highly recommend checking out MH370, The Plane That Disappeared on Netflix. So are there any other unsolved mysteries that you think would make a great documentary? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.